1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 1 tonight. And tonight we're uh, beginning uh, again a new study, uh, just a short study, um, uh, according to uh, looking over the uh, um, the suggestions that have been uh, put in for where we should be going on uh, Wednesday nights, what you would all like to study. Uh, we're looking into the a term in the scripture, the Lord of hosts. Uh, that's one of the names of God that's given uh, in the scripture. Uh, and this uh, term itself, the term Lord of hosts, uh, is only found after uh, the uh, book of Judges, beginning in our passage in 1 Samuel, uh, and it only, as a proper expression, goes until the end of the Old Testament. So in, in just in those books, uh, we have uh, several uses of that term, the Lord of hosts. Nonetheless, the idea that's expressed by that uh, title for God is found throughout the scripture. And so I'd like us to start off with the first use of the phrase in the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 1. The scripture says, Now there was a certain man in Ramoth, uh, Ramoth um, Zophim uh, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Il, uh, Ilkan, uh, Ilkana, the son of Jerob, uh, uh, Jeroham, the son of I, uh, Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zeph, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Peninnah. And Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. So here's the first mention of the Lord of hosts in the scripture, uh, speaking about, obviously, God, uh, Jehovah God, the God that we worship. Uh, he is called the Lord of hosts, and he's dwelling at Shiloh with the high priests. That is, with the priests, with the, uh, the tabernacle, the instruments of worship to God. Uh, that is uh, where he was being worshipped at at that time in Shiloh. It is plainly a reference to God Almighty. In First Chronicles 17.24, we have another reference. Let it even be established that thy name may be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God of Israel, even a God to Israel, and let the house of David, thy servant, be established before thee. So when David is receiving the covenant given from the Lord, he calls him the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Uh, this is just a regular expression that's used as a title for who God is. And the expression uh, on its face, if we were to just uh, take it plainly, simply means the Lord or Jehovah of armies, the, 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 uh, of the multitude of the armies of, of his uh, mighty warriors, uh, we could say. He, uh, it is the Lord of hosts, the Lord of his army. And... Uh, in order to understand what this means, what this means about God, of course we need to look at, well, not only who God is, not only who the Lord of hosts is, but what is his host? Uh, who are they? What do they do? What is their uh, might? What roles do they serve in the world? And that's what I'd like to, to begin to look at first, as we approach to the Lord of hosts and how he relates to his host. And we first note that the host of the Lord are his angels. They are his created servants. In Genesis 32, in verse 1, if you'd like to turn there with me, we have a reference to these uh, angels as the host of the Lord. The scripture says, And Jacob 
went on his way, and the angels of, the, of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. So, so he recognizes the angels as being the host of the Lord. Uh, again, the, the title Lord of hosts is not used until later, but the idea is Jesus, that, that he is the God over his host. He has a host, an army. Uh, and these are his angels that came out to meet Jacob in the way. Uh, these angels, of course, are spiritual beings. In Hebrews 1, verse 7, And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Uh, the, the host of the Lord is not a physical host. It's, it's not uh, physical armies, firstly. It is first and properly his angelic army. They are his host. And he, as the Lord of this host, is mightier than them. In Psalm 82, verse 1, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. He is mightier than them. He is primary. They are only secondary. They serve him, uh, and not the other way around. He doesn't serve them. They attend to him and do his will. Uh, and so the, uh, they are his host. He has the rule over them. Uh, sometimes these are associated with the stars of heaven. Uh, look in Job 38 and verse 7. Job 38 and verse 7. The scripture says, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So the, the morning stars, uh, speaking about the uh, creation event, when they sang together, when they sang in his presence, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Sons of God being uh, a, a common uh, a way of expressing God's angels, his hosts that stand before him. Uh, they're uh, attached to the stars of heaven. In Ezekiel 28, verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherubim that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Uh, here again, they are uh, associated with the stars. That's what the stones of fire mean. They, they're the, the stars that are set in the heavens, and they walk up and down among them. Uh, they, they have their dominion among the stones of fire, especially here uh, uh, the anointed cherubim, who is, who is called Lucifer, uh, that he has uh, had at one time in the presence of God, uh, walking among the stones of fire. In Revelation 1, verse 20, the mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. Uh, again, uh, Jesus, when he speaks about he uses stars as symbols for the angels, and, and he uh, he expresses the, the host of the Lord in this way. And then also, in Genesis 2, verse 1, uh, we have a, um, a reference to uh, even to this host. Again, Genesis 2, verse 1 says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested in the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Uh, not only in the earth, the hosts are the multitudes on the earth, but also in the heaven. It says that the hosts of heaven were made. Uh, again, just uh, showing that, that God has created these, that, that they are subject to him, not the other way uh, around. They do what uh, he bids them uh, to do. Um, and just uh, uh, a little thought here that um, uh, since we, we just passed Christmas, 
um, is that when the uh, multitude of the heavenly host uh, in Luke chapter 2 came and, and showed themselves to the shepherds, it says that there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. Um, being uh, at nighttime um, and, and, and uh, the, the angels being associated with the stars of heaven, uh, I'm sure that uh, it looked like to the shepherds that all of the stars of heaven were declaring this to them. All of the host of heaven, all of the angels which, had, which are associated with the stars coming down from walking among the stars to declare the birth of Jesus Christ. These are the host of heaven. They have come down and they're declaring that Jesus Christ, God himself, has, has stepped into his creation and is walking among men. And so uh, the host of the Lord are his angels. Uh, they do uh, what he says to do, and it is done by them. And I'd like us now just to spend the rest of the time tonight looking at a few roles which these angels play. Uh, again, God uh, is above them, and God tells them what to do, and he has told them and purposed them for certain roles that they play in his creation. Uh, and the first is, uh, that I'd like us to look at, is an, a similar expression to the Lord of hosts, that is, the Lord that sitteth between the cherubim, the Lord between the cherubims in the scripture. Look in Second Samuel 6, verse 1. And this will show us a, a little bit about the various roles that uh, the angels of God play in Samuel, uh, 2 Samuel 6, verse 1. The scripture says, Again David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal of, uh, Baal of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of his armies that dwells between the cherubims. Uh, he, he dwells in their midst. He dwells between them. This is, uh, first off, a, a reference, obviously, to the Ark of the Covenant itself, uh, that there were two cherubims on either side of the Ark of the Covenant, and they stretched their wings out towards the mercy seat, uh, where God would come down and uh, commune with his people uh, from that mercy seat. But it also is according as Moses said, or as, as it was said to Moses, according to the pattern of the things that you were shown in the mountain, according to the heavenly pattern that he was shown. Uh, in heaven, God also dwells between the cherubims. And this, this word cherubim is not so much about a species of thing. It's not about what a thing is. It's not just a generic reference to a kind of angel but a role which an angel serves in heaven, namely that they are around his throne, that God dwells between them. Uh, they are his, uh, as it's been called by some, his throne guardians. Uh, they stand around his throne to keep uh, unclean, uh, uncleanness out of his presence. Uh, we see this all throughout the scripture, that God uh, has uh, an entourage of uh, throne guardians of cherubims, seraphims, which uh, he sits in the midst of. In Revelation 4, verse 6, Before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Ho uh, Almighty, the, uh, which was and is and is to come. Uh, they uh, stand before God. God's throne is in the midst of them. 
uh, and they give him praise continually. Uh, they even serve a ceremonial role, uh, like in a temple before God. In Revelation 8, 3, And another angel came down and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of the, all saints uh, upon the golden art, altar, which was before the throne. Uh, he offered incense, he did uh, service before the Lord. Also in Ezekiel, we have this same image. Uh, we studied uh, some time ago in Ezekiel chapter, beginning in Ezekiel chapter 1, and going through the visions of Ezekiel, uh, that there, the angels of the Lord uh, carry his uh, throne. Uh, they are imaged and in, in the vision they carry his throne around. Uh, they always do him service wherever he goes. In Ezekiel 10 verse 1, Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, as it were, a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen, and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherubim, and fill thine hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. Now the cherubims stood on the right side of the house when the man went in and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherubim and stood over the threshold of the house and the house was filled with the cloud and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. So they, uh, these uh, beautiful beings, these uh, powerful beings uh, are being uh, used by God to carry around his throne, to, to do service to him. He, uh, he is so mighty and powerful and above all things that he uses the highest of created beings uh, as his servants to carry him wherever he would go. He is the Lord that dwells between the cherubims, among the cherubims and above the cherubims. In Ezekiel 28, verse 13, again, uh, as we read before, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherubim that covereth. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Uh, this beautiful being being described. Uh, it says that he was the anointed cherubim with all of his beauty that covereth. Uh, that was his role to do as a cherubim was to cover, was to guard the way to uh, the throne of God. Uh, this is what the cherubim do. This is part of the host of the Lord. In Isaiah 6, in verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried one to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. So this seraphim, uh, it says that when he cried, the seraphim, uh, the the throne guardian of God, when he cried, the uh, pillars of uh, Solomon's temple moved and shook, and the, the whole house was full of smoke when he uh, when he cried out. And yet he serves God. He is in the temple underneath God. Uh, God is is high and lifted up above him. In the Psalms also, uh, we see this role being played by these hosts. In Psalm 99, verse 1, The Lord reigneth. 
Let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all people. Let them praise thy great and terrible name, for it is holy. Uh, the, so he sits between the cherubims. Uh, he is high and lifted up above all people, uh, and they serve him, these mighty beings. In Genesis, uh, also we see this uh, being expressed. In Genesis 28 and verse 10, if you'd like to uh, turn there with me, uh, I'll give you a moment to do so. Uh, the Lord standing uh, above the cherubim, above his angels that serve him. Genesis 28, verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and laid down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up uh, on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending upon, uh, on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. So the, the vision of Jacob's ladder uh, that we see here, what's the vision of? Uh, it's of a ladder set on the earth, and the angels uh, are on the ladder going up and down on it. But above the ladder, above the angels, is the Lord, the, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob here, standing above his cherubims uh, as they do his will, as they keep the way to God. In Genesis 3.23, we also see the same role. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Uh, God in the garden, he sent, it says that he sent out the man, that implies he is in the garden, and he drives the man out of the garden. He places his cherubims at the entrance of the garden to keep the way to where he is, to his dwelling place. And so we see now why they're called oftentimes throne guardians, because they are keeping the way to God. They are keeping the way to his dwelling place, lest any unclean thing come and approach to him. Uh, he's not threatened by the world. It's, it's not as if he needs somebody to protect him, but rather to keep the uncleanness out of his presence. Uh, in one sense, it's for our protection uh, so that he keeps us at a distance until we are made clean so that we don't approach and we are not destroyed by his holiness. And so that's the one role that the, the angels, the hosts of the Lord, play. And I'd like us to look at another tonight. Another is that they serve to uh, the role of being his messengers. Uh, in fact, our English word angels just simply comes from the word messenger. Uh, to, to be sent out to bear a message to someone. Uh, they are in the presence of the Lord. The angels uh, stand in his presence. And so he, uh, as they're in his presence, he sends them out uh, from him to, to carry messages uh, to humanity. In Genesis 19 and verse 1, we read of one instance of this. Genesis 19 and verse 1. The scripture says, And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, 
And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And down in verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hasted Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon uh, the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto, the, unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. So the angels, the, the angels of God uh, came into Sodom uh, to warn Lot about the judgment of the Lord that was coming. And not only to warn, but to deliver him out of the city, to take him out of the city uh, as agents of God's mercy, because God was merciful to him. And they brought him out. This is especially um, a, a role that God sends his angels to do towards his people, uh, towards those that he, uh, he knows as far as the gospel that, that are his own. In Hebrews 1 verse 15, uh, 14, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? In 1 Peter 1 verse 12, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Uh, so they are ministers for those that shall be the heirs of salvation. They desire to look into the things of the gospel as they are sent by God, uh, and so they are messengers to uh, mankind from the Lord. Uh, of course, we know that they don't show up in uh, a uh, physical way, in a, in a visible way now. Uh, revelation has uh, ceased in that sense, uh, but nonetheless, they are sent to, to do certain tasks from the, work, uh, from the Lord, to, to work behind the scenes. Uh, we're not supposed to attempt to to communicate with them ourselves. We're not to seek them out uh, because that's not in what the Lord has sent them to do. Uh, but nonetheless, they do his bidding. They, they are sent from the Lord to do what he has commanded them. In Luke one twenty six, we have another example of this. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Uh, the angels being sent and, and bringing message from the Lord. The angels are even said in the scripture, uh, it, it, it's taught that they had a hand in delivering the law to Moses. Uh, they had a hand in, uh, in bringing the word of God to the world uh, through the law. In Galatians 3.19, speaking of the law, that it was ordained by angels in the hand of a media mediator. And in Acts 7.52, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Speaking to the Jews, the ancestors of the Jews, uh, that they received by the disposition of angels, by the mediation of angels, the law came to them. Uh, and so they are God's messengers uh, to take his, uh, his words where he would have them to go and to uh, deliver uh, people from hardships, from, from difficulties, if it be the Lord's will. Uh, we know that Lot had uh, an angels come to his family and deliver them out of the city. We know the angels were sent at sundry times to deliver armies which were uh, in a bad way. Even the, um, the prophets of the Lord were protected by angels. Uh, and I think that even now, in, in uh, uh, sort of behind the scenes, in a way that is not made apparent to us, 
that God does send them as the agents of his will to, to deliver, to do his will in the world, to set up things for his people. Uh, and so the, they are his messengers, they are his agents in the world. And finally, uh, tonight, and this will be the last thing we look at together tonight, uh, before we begin to look more explicitly at the Lord of hosts himself next week, uh, the host of the Lord uh, are his armies, the army of the Lord. Uh, this is more properly what the term uh, host in the Lord of hosts means in the scripture the 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 lord of his armies in numbers 7 verse 7 we read of what the the word host uh, means then the tribe of zebulun and eliab the son of helon shall be captain of the children of zebulun and his host uh, and his host and those that are numbered thereof were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred so in our uh, numbering the armies of Israel, uh, it, it references them as the host, the army of uh, this tribe or that tribe. In Psalm 103, verse 20, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless thee, the, ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. So there's uh, uh, um, in there the, the parallel is between the uh, strong ones of the Lord, the angels that excel in strength and all of the host of the Lord uh, that do his will. Uh, they are his army and they, uh, they do his will as an army. These, uh, this army of the Lord is described in several passages in Scripture. In 2 Kings 6, verse 15, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? So the, uh, the, the servant of Elisha went out of the house and he saw an army of men uh, surrounding uh, on the hilltops uh, everywhere. Uh, and he went back and he said, what are we going to do? Uh, you know, Master, we're in a bad place here. And in verse 16, he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. So the, he's given sight to see uh, what was happening spiritually around him. Uh, that the host of the Lord, the angels of the Lord, were all around. The, the, the chariots and horsemen of the Lord uh, surrounded the uh, man of God the, uh, and, and he himself and protected him and outnumbered all of the armies that were come out against them. In Matthew 26, verse 51, we also read, And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priests and smote off his ear. This was when they were coming to take Jesus away. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that, uh, that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scripture be fulfilled, that thus it might, it must be? So Jesus giving us insight here, he says that the Lord uh, was able to give him tw over, he says, twelve legions of angels. Uh, he doesn't even specify exactly how many angels uh, would be able to come to his aid. 
uh, a, a great number of angels. In fact, what he's probably saying here is the fullness of God's hosts, because because 12 uh, has reference to the 12 tribes of Israel, all of God's people, all of his elect, all of his elect angels, that he is able to send them to the aid of Jesus Christ, uh, an innumerable company of angels that the Lord could send. And these are not just for show. Uh, the host of the Lord uh, actually can and do engage in combat for the name of the Lord. In Daniel 10 verse 12, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Michael, uh, the, one of the chief princes, one of the chief um, of the host of the Lord, uh, he comes and he fights on behalf of God the Son as he is coming to show himself to Daniel. In Revelation 12, verse 7, again we read, There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cut out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The Michael leading the armies of the Lord, uh, fights against Satan in heaven and casts him down by the power of Jesus Christ to the earth. Uh, they uh, do his will. They fight on his behalf. And each of these, each one of the host of the Lord, uh, are mighty beings. They are capable of uh, great uh, feats of uh, battle. Uh, in might, each one of them is great. As we read before, bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. And again in Joel 2, verse 11, And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that, excel, uh, that it executeth his word. He is strong that executeth his word, that is his camp, the, his uh, angels. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? They even have a, a role to play in the day of the Lord, uh, in, in fighting against his enemies. In intellect, also they are uh, great and cunning to uh, do battle. Uh, in Second Samuel, for hand my handmaid said, the word of my Lord, the king, shall now be comfortable. For as an angel of God, so is my Lord, the king, to discern good and bad. Therefore, the Lord thy God will be with thee. So he is, he is uh, wise as an angel of the Lord. He is uh, discerning as they are. In verse 20, then, to fetch about his form of speech hath thy servant Joab done this thing. And my Lord is wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of God, to know all things that are in the earth. So they have uh, intelligence and they're able to execute uh, his will uh, according to that intelligence. Uh, not only this, they have wisdom to interpret uh, visions, just as a, an aside here. Uh, in Daniel 8 verse 16, it speaks of how Gabriel was sent to make Daniel to understand the vision, uh, to interpret the vision to Daniel. Uh, and so uh, all we've seen tonight uh, is the greatness of the host of the Lord, uh, how they are mighty, how they are many, uh, how they are under the Lord. Uh, they are not mightier than he, he is. They cannot or they ought not to do. Uh, anything that he speaks against them that they should not 
do. Uh, they are made to serve him and his purposes. Uh, and uh, seeing how mighty they are, uh, seeing how great they are, uh, I hope that, that what we take away from this study tonight, uh, though uh, all we've looked at it is, is how the angels are, uh, until next week, I hope we all think about how great the Lord must be, uh, how strong and mighty he is, uh, that they are his host. They do what he says. They put together are not mightier than him. Uh, he would be able to subdue all of them and more uh, if he so chose to do. Uh, even so much that uh, a third of the angels, as we'll see, uh, were cast out from uh, heaven and uh, followed Satan. And they will not be able to withstand him on the last day. Uh, they are uh, no match for him. Uh, and so when, just for tonight, when we hear the term, the Lord of hosts, that's what we should think about. It is not the greatness so much of the host, but the greatness of their Lord. The one who commands them, the one who made them, uh, is greater than they are. And he is able to make their end to come swiftly to them. Uh, and so until next week, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you, and Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for that great captain of your people, and we thank you for the victory that we have in him. Lord, we pray tonight that if there are any lost in here, that you would draw them to him to be saved. Lord, that you would help them to know his great victory against sin. And Lord, that all of the demons of hell would be unable to protect them against his coming judgment. And we pray that you would show them that uh, he has stretched his arm of mercy out to them in this time. Lord, we pray that uh, you'd go with us this week and that you'd help us to serve you. Uh, Lord, that you would send us as your messengers to uh, preach the gospel to those that we know. And Lord, we pray that uh, we would see some saved, Lord, uh, that we would uh, that we would know your power in, in, in saving them. Lord, we pray that you'd be with those that couldn't be with us tonight. Uh, Lord, give them comfort and give them healing, Lord. And Lord, help them, uh, uh, even just in their devotional, Lord, uh, to know your presence, to know that you love them, uh, and to know that you, uh, that you, that they have fellowship with, with us and you. Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you, you'd forgive us and that you'd keep us safe until Christ's coming. And it's in his name we pray.